The Black Death to COVID-19, the world's worst pandemics and epidemics. Disease outbreaks have brought entire civilizations to their knees throughout history, killing millions. Although humanity has made significant advances in epidemiology, we still face new threats such as COVID-19, which has claimed countless lives. HIV AIDS has already taken over 40 million lives, while even the bubonic plague still claims lives today. It is worth looking back at how past epidemics and pandemics have changed the course of history and shaped the modern world. Before we dive into the worst pandemics and epidemics, let's first define what they are. Epidemics are diseases that affect many people simultaneously and spread from person to person in a localized area. On the other hand, pandemics are epidemics that have spread over a large area and are prevalent throughout an entire country, continent, or even the whole world. Now that we understand the difference between an epidemic and pandemic diseases, let's take a closer look at some of the worst outbreaks in history. From prehistoric times to the modern era, these pandemics and epidemics have caused unimaginable devastation and forever changed the course of history. Also known as the Plague of Galen, the Antonine Plague was an ancient pandemic that devastated the Roman Empire. It is estimated that up to 2,000 citizens of Rome died each day between 165 to 180 CE. Soldiers returning from Mesopotamia unknowingly brought back the disease, which would end up killing over 5 million people and decimating the Roman army. Symptoms of the disease included fever, diarrhea, vomiting, thirstiness, swollen throat, coughing, and skin eruptions or rash. According to Galen, a Greek physician who witnessed the outbreak and described its symptoms, the disease lasted roughly two weeks. Although not everyone who contracted the illness perished, those who survived built immunity against future outbreaks. According to the description provided by Galen, current experts believe that the disease that ravaged the empire was probably smallpox or measles. The Plague of Justinian began in 541 and devastated the Byzantine Empire, marking the first of three major plague pandemics. Lasting until 549, the first wave of the plague killed between 15 to 100 million people, representing 25 to 60 percent of Europe's population then. The plague was caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, the same organism that caused the Black Death. The disease likely originated in the Tian Shan Mountains. It was transported by rats stowing away on grain ships from Egypt by 542. The disease had reached Constantinople, where it caused a death rate estimated to be closer to 5,000 deaths per day. It is believed that between 20% and 40% of the city's population eventually died from the disease. Both Procopius and Emperor Justinian caught the plague, but neither died from the illness. The Black Death was a devastating plague pandemic that swept Europe from 1347 to 1352, resulting in an estimated 25 to 100 million deaths. The illness had its roots in Central Asia and was introduced to the Crimea region by Mongol merchants and warriors. From there, it entered Europe through Italy, possibly carried by rats or human parasites on Genoese trading ships sailing from the Black Sea. The disease was caused by a bacterium called Yersinia pestis, carried by fleas on rodents. However, recent studies suggest that human parasites like lice may have also been carriers. The disease was known as the Black Death because it turned the skin and sores black and caused other symptoms like fever and joint pains. The disease killed up to two-thirds of those infected, with estimates suggesting that between 30% and 50% of the population of affected areas died from the Black Death. The high death toll had significant consequences on medieval European society, including a shortage of farmers leading to demands for an end to serfdom questioning of authority, rebellions, and the abandonment of many towns and villages. It took two centuries for the population of Europe to return to the numbers it had before the Black Death struck. Between 1520 and 1576, the world was ravaged by the deadly disease known as smallpox, which claimed the lives of an estimated 5 to 8 million people. The Spanish conquest of Mexico significantly influenced the spread of the disease during the 16th century. At the time, the native population of Mexico numbered between 15 and 30 million. Still, by the end of the century, smallpox decimated them. When Hernán Cortés and his conquistadors fled the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan in 1520, they left behind their African and indigenous enslaved people, 
some already infected with smallpox. The disease quickly spread among the native population, resulting in one of the most dramatic population collapses in human history. This is an example of a virgin soil epidemic. A disease introduced to a new population with no previous exposure can spread rapidly and cause high mortality rates. Coco Litzli decimated the Aztec population of Mexico. This disease caused high fever, headaches, and bleeding from the nose, mouth, and eyes from 1545 to 1550. It is estimated that 15 million people, or around 80% of the population, were wiped out, making it one of the deadliest epidemics in history. Recent DNA analysis of remains from the Teposcolula Yucunda burial site has revealed that a strain of Salmonella enteric bacteria likely caused the epidemic. Unlike Europeans, the Aztecs had no immunity to this disease, which may have contributed to the high mortality rate. The second outbreak, 30 years later, killed half of the remaining population. The third plague pandemic originated in Yunnan, China in the 1840s. The plague spread rapidly, partly thanks to the shift from sailing ships to faster steamboats in merchant fleets. By 1899, the plague had reached Europe and soon became a global phenomenon. While the plague was technically a pandemic, the vast majority of deaths occurred in India during British colonial rule, known as the British Raj. During this time, it is estimated that over 15 million people died, with 12 million deaths occurring in India alone. Fortunately, the pandemic eventually ended in 1960, when the number of annual deaths from the plague dropped below 200. Despite this, Plague cases still occur in some rural regions of the United States and parts of Africa and Asia. The Great Influenza Pandemic, also known as the 1918 Influenza Pandemic, originated with the first reported cases at Fort Riley, Kansas. This was when the United States prepared to send thousands of soldiers to fight in World War I. The close quarters and movements of troops between bases allowed the disease to spread quickly and widely across the country. Once in Europe, the avian H1N1 virus continued to spread along with the movement of war. Interestingly, despite its origins in the US, the pandemic became known as the Spanish Flu because Spain was a neutral country during the war and its newspapers covered the pandemic from the beginning. Other countries censored news of the flu to maintain morale. Still, Spanish news sources continued reporting on it, leading many to believe it originated there. Influenza is naturally present in birds and can also survive in pigs, making it capable of reaching incredibly high death rates as it does not require humans to survive. Between 1918 and 1920, the virus is estimated to have caused between 40 million and 50 million deaths worldwide, surpassing the total number of deaths during World War I. Typhus is a bacterial disease that thrives in unsanitary conditions. Russia in the early 20th century provided the perfect environment for its rapid spread. The Bolshevik Revolution, World War I, the Russian Civil War, and the Great Influenza Pandemic of 1918 created conditions for typhus to flourish. The disease declined during peacetime but resurged with the collectivization and gulag prison systems introduced by Stalin in 1931. The epidemic created fear in Eastern Europe, and anti-Semitism merged with the fear of lice. Jews were falsely accused of being transmitters of parasites, which later became propaganda in Nazi Germany. The typhus epidemic caused 2 to 3 million deaths out of 20 to 30 million cases between 1918 and 1922 in Russia. Although typhus can be treated with antibiotics today, no vaccine is available. In the winter of 1957, a new virus emerged from China, later called the Asian flu. While it was initially unclear if this virus was the same as the 1918 influenza virus, it was later discovered to be an H2N2 rather than H1N1. This pandemic resulted in an estimated 1 to 4 million deaths worldwide, with 116,000 Americans dying. However, the number of deaths would have been much higher if not for the emergence of a flu vaccine provided to 30 million Americans. The outbreak of 1957 was linked to differences in how people were affected by the illness. Some infected only had mild symptoms, like a cough and slight fever. 
On the other hand, others suffered from severe complications like pneumonia, which could be deadly. Those not affected by the virus were thought to have had antibodies that protected them from closely related strains of influenza. Thankfully, the rapid creation of a vaccine for the H2N2 virus and the availability of antibiotics to treat secondary infections helped to control the spread of the pandemic and decrease the number of deaths. In 1968, the third influenza pandemic of the 20th century emerged in Hong Kong. The Hong Kong flu was caused by the H3N2 influenza virus, which unlike the previous Asian flu, was less deadly but highly contagious. With the rise of commercial air travel, an estimated 160 million people were able to spread the virus around the world quickly. Throughout the pandemic, from 1968 to 1970, the H3N2 virus claimed the lives of 1 to 4 million people worldwide. Although a vaccine was developed in 1968, it was too late for many countries as the virus had already peaked. By 1969, demand for the vaccine had dropped, leading to its phased out production. Nevertheless, the pandemic did not end and the H3N2 virus continues to cause seasonal influenza today. In 1981, the world was introduced to one of the deadliest pandemics, HIV AIDS. The CDC published an article about five gay men in Los Angeles who died from lung infections and suppressed immune systems. Although the exact origin of HIV AIDS is still unknown, it is believed to have crossed over from primates to humans before the 1940s. Unsafe sex practices, unsterile medical treatments, and colonial practices around sex work allowed the virus to spread widely. HIV AIDS has killed 42 million people as of 2023. Still, new infections and deaths have declined since the late 1990s and mid-2000s due to the emergence of antiretroviral drugs. However, HIV AIDS is still a major public health issue and efforts are ongoing to prevent new infections and find a cure. In December 2019, a mysterious respiratory illness emerged in Wuhan, China that soon spread globally, leading to the current pandemic caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The virus is believed to initially spilled over from animals to humans, though the exact source remains uncertain. Some speculate that the virus may have escaped from a laboratory studying coronaviruses, but no conclusive evidence supports this theory. Regardless of its origins, the COVID-19 pandemic has significantly impacted worldwide, with estimates ranging from 6.9 to 29.6 million deaths as of 2023. To limit the spread of the virus, actions have been taken, such as encouraging mask use, practicing social distancing, and implementing vaccination programs. Despite these measures, the pandemic remains a significant global health and well-being obstacle. While these pandemics and epidemics were devastating, it is also important to note that we have come a long way in medical advancements and technology. Thanks to the hard work of medical professionals and researchers, we now have vaccines, treatments, and a better understanding of disease prevention. Remember to stay informed, stay safe, and take necessary precautions to protect yourself and those around you. Together, we can work towards preventing and mitigating the effects of future outbreaks. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload.